Hey y'all, welcome back to Coffee and Composition. I am excited to be back for the spring season and I hope you enjoyed our special guest session with Candice and got some good inspiration for coffees to pair with your composition and writing assignments for this spring as you finish out this school year or whenever you're watching this. And I am looking forward to this season taking a lot of the things that we've learned and putting those elements together to help you practically apply them to some of your writing assignments. So. As always, we're gonna grab our coffees and we're gonna get started. And if you like this mug, I will put a link in the description box below where you can get a copy or get one of our mugs on our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and share our screen and get started with our first week. All right, hopefully you can see it. And I'm gonna to go to slideshow mode so it can be better and bigger. There we go. So we're gonna start with the common assignment. And we talked about this a little bit with Candace, the rhetorical analysis. This is a common first year assignment for students, but it is one that we don't really dive into deeply a lot of times. So if you have any trouble translating your thoughts to the page and you just want more in-depth help than we give you on these little quick sessions, then you can scan this barcode or this QR code or go to our website and see how we can help you. All right, so what is rhetorical analysis? Let's get into it. A rhetorical analysis is just when you look at the ways in which a writer is making an argument. So it can be a piece of literature, it can be an essay, it can be nonfiction, it can be poetry, but you're looking at how the author is making their argument, making their point. That's the gist of what a rhetorical analysis is. So you may remember from some of our previous videos, the rhetorical triangle. Most often, you'll use part of the rhetorical triangle to analyze how effective or ineffective a writer's argument is. So you may not use the whole triangle, you may just use pathos, or you may just use logos, or you may do a combination of logos and ethos, or pathos and logos. But the rhetorical triangle really just kind of gives you that framework to analyze what the writer's argument is and how they're making that point. Are they using a lot of emotions with pathos to appeal to their readers? Are they using a very logical argument and the order of how they're structuring their thesis and their supporting um, statements and supporting arguments to go with their thesis? Or are they using a lot of research to go with ethos with the credibility of their argument? So that's the rhetorical triangle, just a refresher for you if you forgot. So what's students' most common challenge with rhetorical analysis? A lot of times students often give their opinion of a piece of writing without backing it up with evidence of rhetorical tools. So they may say, the author really made me feel this way when they wrote this, but they don't say they made me feel this way because they had a personal connection and they used pathos. They just say that they felt this way, but they don't connect it to the triangle down here. Or they may say, I really felt like this author was telling the truth about what they were saying and I felt like they really knew what they were talking about. That's good, but what about how they're saying it and what they're presenting is making you feel that they're trustworthy? Is it their tone, the tone that they're using? Is it the style of writing that they're using? Things like that. So taking it from that next level of opinion to backing it up with evidence of rhetorical tools like language and style and tone, all those things helps to make your writing a whole lot stronger rather than just an opinion piece, which is my most common comment to students. Take it from an opinion piece, back it up with evidence using the rhetorical triangle as your starting point. All right, so we're just gonna be building our composition craft box. We've already gone through elevating our language, right? We've gone through words to take our language to the next level of just beautiful art, right? And we've done springing into sentences. We looked at simple sentences, compound sentences, compound complex sentences. We've done all that. We looked at the power of paragraphs. And then last fall, we looked at the art of arguments. So we've just been building a robust composition craft box all along the way. And that's all to get us ready for this season. So what's coming next? What can you expect for this spring? Well, we're going to look at one of my favorite books, which is right here, The Elements of Style by Strunk and White. If you haven't read it, if you haven't gotten a copy of it, you can get a copy real cheaply at half price books. It's a tiny little book. I even have the actual copy right here, super tiny. You can see I got it from half price books myself, but it's a small little book, but it packs a big punch and it will just take your writing to the next level. Even if you're not someone who thinks you're going to be going into English as a major, or you're going to be going into anything that's writing heavy, Writing isn't everything. You have nurses aides who are writing. You have 
uh, computer software engineers who are doing writing. Writing isn't everything. So you really want to be able to show that you can elevate your own writing by getting something like Strunk and White and Elements of Style to show that you have your own style and how you use the tools that are readily available in the English language to elevate your own style of writing and make yourself stand out in any job, in any class, anything like that. So we're gonna really be diving into Strunk and White, looking at a few of their suggested composition tools and techniques for how to write. And we're gonna simplify them and actually apply them to a sample essay that I have for you. So that's a quick overview for what's coming for the spring. This is just, again, another welcome, showing you where we've been and where we're going. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video where we really dive into a sample essay, take the Strunk and White book and pull it apart, make it better. All right, I will see you next time.